Hey folks, welcome to the video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about spin. It's a quantity that's fundamental to a lot of fields of physics, including particle physics, condensed matter physics, and even quantum computing. Let's get into it. When I say the word spin, the first object that comes to my mind is a top spinning about its axis. And this is a good first picture to have, some object rotating about an axis. Take an electron, for example. It's negatively charged, and let's say that this electron moves around in a loop about the vertical axis. Now, electromagnetic induction tells us that the motion of this charged particle, this electron moving in a loop, induces a magnetic field around the loop. The orientation of this magnetic field is given by the orientation of the loop itself. If the loop is oriented one way, the magnetic field is oriented one way, and if the loop is oriented the other way, and the magnetic field is also oriented the other way. Now, this orbital angular momentum of the electron moving in an orbit in a loop around an axis is tied to magnetic fields. Similarly, there's an object called the intrinsic angular momentum of this electron. That's the object we call spin. It too is tied to magnetic interactions and one way to help us understand that is by talking about the stern gerlach experiment. A stern gerlach experiment is a way of detecting the intrinsic angular momentum or spin of a particle. Here's how it goes. We take a particle with some spin and we send it through a magnetic field. This magnetic field is generated by two magnets, one on top and one on the bottom. And depending on the orientation of the spin of this particle, it's deflected by a certain angle, and the deflection is detected on a screen behind these magnets. For example, if we were to treat the spin of a particle much like a magnet itself, let's say that we start with a particle whose magnetic orientation is pointed directly upward. This is gonna be deflected by the largest upward angle possible, and it's gonna hit the screen on the highest mark possible. Let's say we were to take the magnetic orientation of a particle directly downward, this is gonna be deflected by the highest angle downward possible, and be, de be detected on the screen there. Let's say we were to rotate the magnetic field of this particle by a slight amount from the upward direction. Now, we would expect that this particle is deflected a little less than the true upward pointing magnetic field particle. So it hits the screen in between the middle and the highest mark possible. Similarly, the case holds for the magnetic field of a particle that's oriented slightly off from true bottom. It's deflected by a slightly lower angle than true bottom itself. And if we were to take a particle whose magnetic orientation is horizontal, then it shouldn't be deflected at all. So it goes straight through and hits the screen right in the middle. Now, this is the expected result of the stern gerlach experiment. However, the actual result is a little more puzzling. Here's what it looks like. Instead of this continuous band of particles with different orientations of magnetic field or spin, we see a discrete spectrum where if the spin of the particle is oriented even slightly upwards, it's deflected by exactly the same amount as if it were oriented to true north. And if it's slightly off from true bottom, it's still deflected by the same amount as a particle with spin that's true bottom itself. Now this discrete spectrum of particles detected on the screen tells us something about spin. It tells us that spin is quantized. It doesn't come in continuous amounts. Unlike an actual magnetic field that can come in continuous variations, spin doesn't. You might hear physicists sometimes say, bosons have integer spin, while fermions have half integer spin. They're saying that spin is quantized for these particles. They come in discrete amounts. And that's what we see from the stern gerlach experiments. This intrinsic angular momentum of the particle, something we call spin, is a quantized object. I hope you have a better understanding of what spin is now. There are some caveats to this picture, however. 
I told you that spin is the intrinsic angular momentum of a particle. For example, we had electrons moving around in an orbit. This orbital angular momentum gave rise to magnetic fields. We might think that the constituent distribution of charge of this electron, the intrinsic charge of this electron, was moving about its own axis, and that's what spin is. However, this picture is wrong. The reason is because electrons, the way we think of them today, are point particles. So there's no axis for a distribution of charge to move around because the electron's a point particle. Instead, intrinsic angular momentum comes from a concept known as total angular momentum. Take the Earth revolving around the Sun, for example. Its total angular momentum is the one that's generated by its orbit around the Sun plus the angular momentum it has by its rotation about its own axis. Similarly, in quantum mechanics, the total angular momentum of a particle is its orbital angular momentum plus its spin. That's why we call spin the intrinsic angular momentum of a particle. It's not the literal intrinsic angular momentum. It's not a literal object spinning about its own axis. Instead, it comes from the mathematics of quantum mechanics. I know that's confusing, but hopefully this explanation using stern gerlach experiments gives you an idea of what spin is and why it's quantized. Thanks so much for watching. If you found that interesting, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time.